Hello everyone, it's great to see you again. I cannot believe that we are at almost 53,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. In today's episode, we are making some delicious vegetable stock. Afterwards, I want to show you some wallpaper samples that we are considering for our bedroom makeover. Then we will visit a local garden center in search of hanging basket material. And for dinner, we are making a meaty but meatless lentil loaf. I hope you will dine with me al fresco in the tiny herb garden. You can use just about any vegetables you like for vegetable stock. Today, I'm going to be using some leeks and some onion and celery and parsley and organic carrots. And for the leeks, I'm just cutting the tender green and the white. I'm just roughly dicing the leeks. Actually, I'm not even dicing. I'm merely slicing. I'm going to add the leeks to my onions here. Now, with organic carrots, you do not have to peel them. I just scrub them really well, and I'm going to slice them. You can even use the stem end from the carrot. Now, there are no exact measurements for vegetable stock, or really any kind of stock or broth. It all depends on the size of container you're using in which to make the stock. I'm going to be pressure cooking my stock in the instant pot over here. But of course, you could use any large stock pot to make your stock or broth. Here's my instant pot. I'm going to take the liner out for a moment. Now, besides the vegetables that I showed you earlier, I'm also going to be using some vegetable scraps. What I have in here is some onion skins. Now, I did wash the skins, and the onion skins will give the stock a rich color. I also have parsley stems, and I have, well, let me show you, I have the tough upper green leaves from leeks. I always save these and freeze them for stock. In you go. And I'm going to add the carrots, and I have some fresh parsley celery, leeks, and onions. Now, I want this to be a mild stock, so I'm not using like green bell peppers or red bell peppers uh, or broccoli because I don't want the stock to taste like broccoli or like bell peppers, and they are really strong flavors, so this will be mild. I'm also going to add some fresh thyme. Thyme goes with everything. It's my favorite savory herb. You go one whole bunch of it. Then we have to add some water. I use vegetable stock for making rice and all kinds of other dishes. I'm not going to add any salt or pepper to this because I'm not making vegetable soup here. I'm just making stock. I will add salt and pepper as I need them for various recipes. Now, the Instant Pot has this maximum fill line, so you only want to add enough water to reach that fill line. Now, if you are making stock on the stovetop, you would want to bring it to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and let it bubble away very gently for five or even six hours. I'm going to use the pressure cook setting on the Instant Pot, so my stock will be done in 45 minutes. While we're waiting on this pressure cooker, let's get busy with another project. Earlier, I mentioned that we are looking for wallpaper for our bedroom. Now, I love wallpaper because it lends architectural interest to an otherwise blank canvas. 
Now the wallpaper in this room came from Waterhouse wall hangings. I don't remember the name of the pattern, but it's a green and cream color. Oh, and here's a sample if you'd like to see it, not on the wall. Let me show you the paper in the parlor. For the parlor, we selected a celery green paper. The pattern is a 19th century reproduction from Schumacher wall hangings. We selected green and gold window hangings to complement the wallpaper. Our bedroom is directly upstairs from this room, but we're not going there yet. I want to show you the paper in the music room. The wallpaper in the music room was already here when we bought the house, and since the paper was already in good shape, we decided to keep it. It's a chinoiserie pattern. It was very popular during the 19th century. I have a sample of it here, because I wanted to give you the name of the paper. I'm going to lay this out on a table so you can see. The pattern is called, and I'm going to try to pronounce this, Susu, and it's from Louis W. Bowen Fine Wall Covering. The paper has this beautiful long-tailed bird. I don't know the name of this bird, but if you do, please drop me a note in the comments. And it has a muddy background that works really well in this room. Now, there's always the argument, paint versus wallpaper. Paint costs a lot. Wallpaper is a true investment. So when you're selecting wallpaper, you have to make sure that you get something you truly like. So let's head upstairs to the bedroom. I want to show you some samples that I ordered. We are in the bedroom now, and I have to tell you that every time I film in here, I notice just how terrible the walls look. There's no architectural interest whatsoever because the walls are merely painted. Consequently, I want to put wallpaper in here. Now, I wrote to a company in Sharon Springs, New York, called Adelphi Wall Hangings. They have lots of reproduction wallpaper. And I ordered several samples. Let's have a look at them. Now, this is a four-poster bed, and I hung curtains on either side, but I really need to put a rod over here and hang more curtains. That would help matters dramatically. But I'm going to hold up the wallpaper samples against this wall so you can see. This particular sample is called pineapples. This sample is called ornament and stripe. So it's green and white on a gray background. I'll hold it up against the wall. All of these papers are from the period between 1850 and 1830. This one is called Bees and Stars. I'll show it to you here and then I will show you what it looks like on the wall. Now here's another sample of the pineapple pattern, but in a different color way. This is my favorite out of the whole group. It goes this way or horizontally, so I'll show you both. The pineapples are rose-colored with these brilliant green leaves, and it's on this pale blue background, and here it is horizontally placed. Now depending on the wallpaper that we go with, I will most likely have to change the color of the bed linen and the window hangings in this room. That's all right. This room could use a makeover.
when you order samples from wallpaper companies, they will generally send you a very small envelope size sample for free. But if you want a large sample, you will pay around $15. Money well spent because again, you want to really see what the paper looks like on the wall. It's a big investment. Let me know if you like any of these wallpapers and please mention it in the comments below. And I will be ordering other samples from other companies. While we were looking at wallpaper, the vegetable stock finished cooking. I gave it a natural pressure release of 15 minutes and now I'm going to give it a manual release. So there's going to be a lot of steam. The steam smells just fabulous. Here we go. I'm going to use my spider strainer here to remove the vegetables. Spider strainer is the only kind of spider I like. And I'm putting these goods in a fine mesh sieve set over a bowl. I'm also getting a wonderful vegetable facial. Let's let this drain. Now I'm going to put all of the vegetables and herbs on my compost because they're not worth eating. They've given all of their flavor to the water that's in the pot. If you taste one of these carrots, it will taste like nothing. I'm going to put this on the compost and then I'll be right back. Oh, this made a lot of stock. I'm going to transfer the stock to these canning jars. Although I'm not going to can the stock, I'm going to refrigerate or freeze it. And I have this nice stainless steel canning funnel here. I will link this funnel in the description if you are interested. I'm going to find out just how much stock this made. Now you want to leave some headroom in the jar, like one inch. There we go. So here's one quart. I won't put the lid and the ring on the jar yet because I need this to cool to room temperature. You cannot hot water can vegetable stock because it's not acidic enough for hot water canning, but you can pressure can it. I saw on Amazon that there is a electric pressure canner. It's similar to the Instant Pot in that you don't have to babysit it. It's an investment. It's around $300. This was a real bargain. I was at my supermarket earlier and I looked at the cost of vegetable stock. The good stuff was $8 for just one quart, which is four cups. Look at how much stock this made. And I spent less than $8 on the vegetables and herbs for the stock. So I have two quarts plus three pints. So two pints and a quart. So here's three quarts plus two cups or one pint. This is a lot of vegetable stock. Now, once this is cooled to room temperature, I will put the lids on and their rings. And then I will put some of this in the refrigerator for immediate use and the rest of it I will put in the freezer. And no, there is no fear of the jars breaking in the freezer as long as you leave one inch of headroom. So as the stock freezes and expands, it will not crack the jar. I have some appointments I need to run to, so I will meet you back here tomorrow. Good morning. It's a new day. The sun is shining. I have a lot of activities planned. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare tonight's dinner. I'm making a lentil loaf and the lentil loaf 
we'll use some of the wonderful vegetable stock that you and I made together yesterday. The first thing you need is a nine by five inch loaf pan and you want to grease it lightly. I'm using coconut oil spray. And then line the loaf pan with parchment. This way we can unmold the loaf after it bakes. The first ingredient is three-fourths cup or 157 grams of brown lentils. I'm just going to put this in a small saucepan. Then add 14 and a half ounces or 430 mil of vegetable stock. Add the stock to the lentils. And then I'm going to bring this to a simmer on the stovetop and then cover it and let the lentils cook for just 30 minutes. Tip some olive oil into a large skillet set over medium heat. Add one and three-fourths cups or 150 grams of shredded carrots, one cup or 75 grams of chopped mushrooms, and one cup or 100 grams of diced onion. Saute until the veggies turn tender, about 10 minutes. All right, our veggies are all tender and the mushrooms and onions have exuded their juices. Now transfer the carrots, mushrooms, and onions to a large bowl. Stir in a tablespoon of minced parsley. Also stir in two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, a half teaspoon of salt, grinds of black pepper, a half teaspoon of garlic powder. This looks very colorful. Now let this cool for about 10 minutes. Now stir in a half cup or 55 grams of cooked rice, one cup or 100 grams of shredded mozzarella cheese, one egg and one egg white beaten together, and the lentils. and stir very well. You want all of the ingredients to be coated with the egg and the egg white mixture. Now transfer the mixture to the prepared loaf pan. Smooth the top. And then top it off with some tomato paste. I will link the recipe for this lentil loaf in the description below. You can bake this right away in a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 180 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes. But I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator because I have some errands to run and I want you to join me. And then I will bake it off later for dinner. It's a beautiful day today, and I'm itching to get my hands into soil. So we're going to head over to a local garden center. I want to find some flowering plants for hanging baskets. I'm a sucker for blue hydrangeas, but I don't think I'm going to be buying any today. It's still early in the season, so this store doesn't have a lot, but I think I'm going to be able to find some flowers to plant. And I see some flowers right over here. I love this white specked purple petunia. 
but I don't think it's a super tunia. Super tunias require no deadheading and they trail beautifully in a hanging basket. I'm going to ask about this. Well, I had planned to plant my own hanging baskets, but they already have some baskets already planted with super tunias. This is the Bordeaux variety, which I really love. It's this pale wine color. I'm very happy because I just found trailing geraniums or trailing pelargoniums. They're also called ivy pelargoniums. So these have ivy-like leaves and they will cascade over a hanging basket. This is a, let's see, it's called Ivy Lig Light Lavender. So I'm going to buy a few of these as well. Stay close when it rains at me key. Parts of you. home just removing the tags from the hanging baskets I usually wait too late in the season to buy hanging baskets and then I don't have the cream of the crop to choose from so I'm glad I got an early start I will keep the tags for future reference and again these are super tunia and the variety is called Bordeaux for the wine color. I have a lot of cleaning up to do in this herb garden, but it makes me feel really good to put some hanging baskets in place. Of course, I will keep these watered and fed, and as the super tunias grow, they will cascade over the sides of the basket. I will have to keep my eye on the forecast because if nights become too cold, I will have to bring these indoors. I'm not going to plant the ivy geraniums today because I'm getting very hungry and we have that lentil loaf to bake. I'm really hungry. I'm going to pop this lentil loaf into the oven. And again, it's going to bake for 40 to 45 minutes or even 45 to 50 minutes, we'll see. And here is the lentil loaf. Well, it certainly looks appetizing. I'm going to unmold this. Look at that. Then I'm going to let this cool for about 10 minutes before I cut into it. And after I cut into it, I'm going to eat this lentil loaf and a salad and enjoy some wine outdoors. It's really beautiful outside today. I want to give you a close up of this lentil loaf. It sliced up beautifully and it held together. And along with the lentil loaf, I have a salad of mixed greens. And for dessert, I have one of those little buntlet cakes. It's a lemon buntlet cake that you and I made together in a previous video. And I have some Pinot Grigio. It's quite good. What makes this taste so wonderful is that we use that homemade vegetable stock. Oh, look at the mozzarella cheese. It's very stringy. For a vegetarian dinner, I think this lentil loaf tastes very meaty. This is really good. Thank you so much for spending yesterday and today with me. I really appreciate your company. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And I will see you in the next video. I think we're going to do some more gardening. And of course, we will cook something. Chin chin.